Hello, everyone. My name is Max Berryman. I'm the sports director here at WVOF, Fairfield Student Radio. And at my side here is Andrew Jamison, our fantastic assistant sports director. Uh, and today we're continuing our Stags in the Studio series with a member of the men's basketball team who came up big in Fairfield's most recent win uh, with the Dagger 3 against Manhattan. Please welcome Jalen Leach. Uh, thank you for coming on, Jalen, into conference play this year. I'm just curious what the kind of schedule for you looks like. Uh, you know, being a student, practicing, stuff like that. And, you know, how's the body feeling and what are you looking forward to for the rest of the season? Yeah, definitely in this point in the season, everybody's a little banged up. But at the same time, every team in the country is going to be banged up. So that's just what we're going to have to deal with. Um, obviously, we don't really have a lot of time to recover in terms of, like, games because we play Friday, Sunday. So mm. obviously the schedule is going to be really hectic. But, um, you know, we're working really hard together and we get, we get treatment. Everybody gets treatment and um, we're kind of used to it at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick turnaround, especially. I know you have the game Thursday as part of a doubleheader, um, men's oh, really? and the women's at 11 and men's at 7. But, um, you know, going off that game against Manhattan, you guys have been banged up for the most part, would, um, especially in the big in the big space. You know, Payne Smith only played one man that game in Iona. Yeah. Bleachmore went down in that game against St. Peter's. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, Sec hasn't been 100%, you know, yet and is still working his way back, although has shown signs of progress warming up, I think, the past two games. Mm -hmm. How have you guys seemingly, like, faced that adversity and just kind of like a bend but not break mentality? Yeah, I feel like that's been the story of our whole team since the beginning of the year, just dealing with adversity with, you know, what happened before the season. So, I mean, we're a really tight group together. We have a really good chemistry. So when somebody comes down, we have a next man up mentality. So James has done a really good job. Like you talked about, BSEC has done a really good job to help us with front court guys also. Um, it hasn't been a really crazy adjustment, to be honest. Yeah, and just with obviously kind of the injuries, you know, you know, part of a reason maybe leading to that one and six start and, mm -hmm. you know, the team has bounced back from that. That's not easy to do, um, you know, losing that much initially and, um, you know, trying to stick with it. And so um, was that something where the just the group of guys in the locker room together, was it Coach Casey maybe saying something? What was kind of the response from there? And when you started to rattle off those couple wins, how did you maybe see that, you know, momentum shift? Or did you all feel kind of it was always there and you were just waiting for it to finally click? Yeah, we definitely knew it was always there, uh, especially since the summer with the trip. We played really well together. Uh, the preseason, we played really well together. But uh, when we were losing, Coach Casey just talked about positivity. And we honestly, like, this group is honestly, like, one of the tightest groups I've ever played mm -hmm. with, you know, through high school, college. Like, even when we're down, we're still positive. We're still competing with each other. So we, once we knew that me and Caleb, who we were injured uh, to start the year, so mm -hmm. once we got back, we knew that we could turn it around. Yeah. And, yeah, no, you mentioned, like, it feels like everyone, like, each one person's having a game, you know, since that – um. The game against Ryder where you beat, like, I think it was the stretch where you went at Ryder, Yale, and then Sacred Heart. I think all three at the time were conference favorites, mm -hmm. and you guys um, beat them. So, you know, obviously, like, statement victories in your own right, but you've had um, everybody stepping up. You know, Jasper Floyd had, I think, 25 in that game against Yale. Mm. Um, you had 22 in that game against um, Ryder. Just how, um, especially off the... One of the main things we talk about is the depth. Obviously, you know, Bryson Goodine, he was leading um, the nation in three-point percentage at one point. So um, is that trust, you think, built um, from last year to this year? Do you definitely see, um, like, more um, team chemistry and, like, next man up type mentality? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like the biggest part is that we have a lot of trust in each other. Um, we often work out together, so we get to know each other a lot more than, you know, I have in previous years. So, like you talked about, we have a next man up mentality, and like uh, a lot of people know, it's, it's any given night, whatever guard you know can score, can score. It's just about who who um, who's hot that night. Yeah, and for you personally, um, obviously, you know, have been hot yourself, Mac Player of the Week here uh, within the you know last week or two, and just kind of, you know, from last year to this year, I think you've not only you know doubled the amount of shots you're taking. Um, you know, you're you're being more aggressive without forcing it, kind of finding pace on the court. And this is a Fairfield team that offensively you all like to run fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember there was a chance where Coach Casey, he actually chose not to call the timeout and still, you know, near the end of one of those games managed to get a good shot off and everything like that. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, for you, has this been something where, has this been Coach Casey empowering you to, you know, play like this? Have you, you know, took it upon yourself to maybe – um, you know, play more aggressive in these kind of uh, ways because, 
um, you know, right now, um, just from this year to last year, it's been a big jump kind of from what I've seen. Yeah, uh, one of the big points I wanted to have this summer was honestly just to work on my game because the past two years I really couldn't. I was just rehabbing. So mm. um, this this summer is really big. I'm getting my confidence back, you know, working with trainers and stuff like that. But like you talked about, Casey definitely had a big, you know, part in that. Uh, he always talks to the guards about being aggressive, especially with me. You know, being a leader and being a senior, he wants me to be wants me to be more aggressive and mm. stuff like that. So honestly, it's just trusting him, and he has a lot of trust in me, and I feel like it, it works out like like that. Uh, for on the court too, um, is there something? Are you getting kind of different looks this year offensively? You feel like I know you say you're improving the game in general, but is it something that maybe coach is doing and how you're running the offense? I know um, just in general, like Peyton Smith, you know is at least willing to shoot three, so that probably opens up space on the inside too, I imagine. Mm -hmm. um, is it anything kind of differently offensively in that sense, or um, you know, was it just kind of improving uh, with yourself and building you know, team chemistry? No, I th it's a totally different system, especially mm -hmm. on the offensive end. Um, he gives us a lot of freedom to play you know, than, than last year, the previous years in that. Uh, we run a, a lot of ISOs this year, which is different from last year. Um, he just Coach Casey gives us a lot of looks just to go and uh, play our games, and I feel like that's why we've been successful. No, I think especially with your game, it's most notable because, you know, this team is a lot um, different. You know, obviously you think of guys like Supreme Cook, Alan Jean Rose from last year who transferred, yeah. you know, Caleb Fields, and, you know, you are still here, like, performing. But, you know, now this is a shooter's team, and what do shooters do? They shoot, and, like, you're seeing the three-point numbers. Um go up I think you're shooting 36 from the line as a team um you specifically uh just below 34 percent um mm -hmm. but this is as we mentioned a shooter's team and you know last year it was kind of I think in my opinion a defensive oriented Definitely. um team mm -hmm. but like how is it um how is that space enabled that you mentioned that space Chris Casey enabled you guys to um feed off of and just like play with how has that enabled you to kind of have this breakout season in a way yeah like I talked about he just gives me a lot of trust and um he runs plays for me like I really didn't, haven't had that since I've been here mm -hmm. um we have a lot of you know offense which is mostly for the guards but um we all have really high IQ so like we know when to score when to not score and uh like I talked about we just have a lot of freedom this year and that's pretty much the biggest difference you know, you started one and six. Mm -hmm. um, you know, against um, you know, still getting used to um, conference play. Um, going to go back to that stretch against um, like the Ryder, Yale, Sacred Heart. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned earlier that you had something like you you had like that mind like that positivity because like you know you were in a good amount of those games that loss against Iona. You were in it for yeah. um, a majority of that game, and it feels like this team is like a competitive nature. Like there's no. Um, tough going. I know we say that a lot about um, the MAC and like, you know, the especially with the Sacred Heart and Merrimack coming in mm -hmm. um, as of next season. But how is the team, I guess, responding to, you know, the, the success this year? And what's the mentality right now as we approach Atlantic City? Yeah, I mean, I feel like our practices really haven't changed. We haven't really let go. We're a really competitive group. Like we mm -hmm. go after each other like every single day. Like it doesn't matter. We talk trash to each other. Like it doesn't really matter. So I feel like our competitive nature is still there, um, and I feel like that's the most important part, especially uh, trying to make a run in Atlantic City. Is that something for you, um, you know, talking about just improving your skills? Is it just, um, you know, individual drills, workouts you're doing, or maybe is there someone guarding you in practice that, you know, really kind of challenges you, maybe that possibly didn't have last year? Yeah, uh, preseason Jasper, you know, J Jasper and Bryson were definitely the the two that definitely got onto me, and I had to guard Bryson, which was not fun at all. <laughs> and uh, that really pushed me and helped me, especially with this year regarding you know some of the best players on the other teams. And I feel like that also improved my competitive nature for sure, because I really hadn't had that before. So um, you speak of competitive nature. One of the new additions to the coaching staff um, this year, Taj Benning, class yeah. of twenty one. I believe you played with him I for did. a year. How is his um, presence as a coach now um, really benefited you and um, this team. Yeah, it's helped a lot, especially he's a familiar face to not just me, but you know a couple other guys on the team as well. Um, we work out with him a lot. Um, he calls it the TBA, which is the Taj Benning Academy. So <laughs> a lot of our guards do that, um, and it's it's been really helpful. And he's just a you know really helpful guy, really competitive guy as well, and he knows what it takes to win. So um, yeah, he's definitely helped our program. 
for you, what has been kind of the the favorite victory for you this season? That whether it was one where you know faced a lot of adversity, one where it was just kind of offense was flowing, defense you were playing well. Mm-hmm. Um, what was kind of the you know the game so far you've been you've been looking to? Um, I would probably say the Yale game because mm. I think that was the best team. I think that was the best team we played so far. Mm. Uh, we were down, I think, eight or something with like five minutes left, and we came back. And like I said, they're a really good team. We all played really well. Uh, that was that was off the Ryder game, I think it was. So mm. yeah, uh, that was coming off a win, and we really needed that win, especially for our confidence building up. And you know, the the rest is history. You know, um, you know, going off of that Yale game, you know, you, even when you don't have like those like terrific shooting nights that you've had, like yeah. um. You know, the offense has dropped 92 at one point, I believe, in that game against FDU, where mm-hmm. it seemed like Bleach was on fire. That game against Siena, where Goodine had 40. Yeah. Um, it feels like you have more ways to win now, and you know the offense and the defense, for that matter, is less one-dimensional in that way. Because mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the time, you know, last year was a uh, post by Supreme Cook. You know, not saying like that is um, bad in any way, but like that nature like you know that predictability um with the offense but with this team this year you feel like there are um a plethora of scores from leach fields good on you feel like that game against manhattan also or and even in quinnipiac people were getting those at ones like timely at ones it was mm-hmm. you it was good on it was mm-hmm. field so um really a testament to that next man mentality and um, you need that in the mac conference because you know it's That's a mosh pit right now when you're looking at the standings mm-hmm. yeah right now it's I mean, three teams tied for second, right? So all everyone, I think, seven and four. And yeah, four um, Niagara, Fairfield, St. Peter's in second, both all at seven and four. Quinnipiac at ten one. Iona right on their tails. Yeah, and actually going off that too, um, I was curious to know kind of what the maybe the, either the practice the week before or you know what the mentality is going into games where you've played them once before this season. Manhattan, that was your that was your second game against them. Mm-hmm. Um, what changes? Is it something where you know you all have to maybe look to su- do something different? Are you maybe hoping to do a lot of the same since you know you took the win the first time? And um, how does it look different? Kind of you know you mentioned Yale is a great team, only playing them once. Mm-hmm. Uh, going up against a team for that second time, what changes do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely hard, especially when you beat a team before um, convincingly. Mm. But I feel like uh, our coaches do a good job of critiquing, you know, what we did in the last game and making it better. Like if we were caught up on the Manhattan game, we could have we could have lost that game as well. So uh, in the MAC, especially, you could lose any given night. Like a lot of teams, you know, you never know what team is hot. So I feel like our group is just so competitive. Like it doesn't matter if we beat them or not. Like we, we want to beat them again and you know keep it going. Uh, one question too I had uh, about Peyton Smith, freshman. Mm-hmm. He, um, you know, again besides the last couple games, it was him in kind of that starting role. And I think to a degree, you know, with with Sec and Yetna out at the start, mm-hmm. um, you know, whether that was gonna end up being what happened or not, like he was, you know, had to be kind of forced in that role. And has he's actually, you know, it is a luxury to a certain degree of for him individually being able to play through mistakes and get a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you seen from him um, just kind of like developing throughout the season? And, um, you know, what what can you say about him as a player on the court? Yeah, he's – I feel like he's so much more improved from the summer. Like in summer, I think he was – I don't know, he's like 260 or something like mm-hmm. that. He slimmed down like crazy. Um, so he's just worked really hard. He's worked with the coaches a lot. And like you said before, he's been, he was thrown in the fire. His first start was against uh, Boston College, against a really good big man. Mm. So I feel like that's only going to help him in the future, and I think you know his ceiling is huge. Like he's he's really good. Um, you know, mentioned um, Payne Smith, obviously. Um, yet and Sec two big transfers were injured to um, stop the air. So in a sense, it was riding the hot hand. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you know, like Sec has come back and held his own, especially in that game against um, Manhattan when um, I think well Smith wasn't playing, Bleachmore wasn't playing, so he's really mm-hmm. um, coming to his own. How have the transfers such as like Goodine, um, Floyd, Bleachmore, um, and second, I think there might be a few more in there. How have they, I guess, like challenged you in a way to become a better player? Yeah, um, I feel like a couple of the JUCO guys, Louie and Jasper, they're just they're they're wired differently. Like they come from a competitive school before, so they bring that level of intensity to our team that we really haven't had before. And good on Bryson, obviously, is just a really amazing talent, um, really athletic. So um, I feel like those guys just give us an extra layer of competitiveness and, and intensity that we really haven't had before. 
Uh, one other question about Coach Casey. I know you mentioned um, his his kind of role and how he brings positivity and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else, you know, is there kind of another, um, you know, either just trait you think of him for, whether, you know, on the court, during practice, is there, you know, what other kind of things for you does he bring to the team, uh, whether that's, you know, for you individually or just, you know, among the team? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like he just cares for, like, every player like it doesn't mm. matter you know your role in team whatever he, he cares for you he brings you to the side tells you what you're doing right what you're doing wrong and he just wants people to do to better like he just wants everybody to you know improve each and every day and he instills that instills that into us every day and just talks to us about how we can be better and um how like i said before how positive he is and that kind of just takes over the team mm. Uh, for you as well, um, just talking about, again, back to that offense, um, what is it maybe about the play style this year that you think benefits you? Um, I feel like we run a lot of more plays where there's more spacing. Mm. Um, so that gives me guys like me, Caleb, Bryson, more, more areas to drive the ball as well. And we get a lot more in transition this year, which is you know very helpful for guys like me who like to drive and get out in transition. So... Mm. Um, I feel like there's more opportunities where our, um, I know where I can score the ball much easier. Um, you know, going back to, um, I believe also your assist numbers of in addition to um, scoring. So, um, you know, obviously the two first years were highlighted, um, unfortunately, by injuries. I don't, yeah. um, and it was even for, there was about one game and um, I don't remember who it was against. It might have been um, St. Peter's, but, you know, you took a hit to that shoulder and, you um, we were worried about that for a little bit, but it seems you've come into your own a little bit, you know, Mac player of the week, and you feel like you're coming into your own a little bit of a breakthrough. How, um, I guess, how much did that Costa Rica trip, did that, like, instill a confidence that um, kind of carried over into the season? Yeah, definitely. Um, I played really well uh, that trip. Uh, I had a bigger role on that team as well. So that was my first time really with the ball in my hands a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, since I've been here, and I shot the ball pretty well, so yeah, it gave me a lot of confidence, especially with you know the group we had. We have a really unselfish group, so I knew you know I could get some shots up, but also my teammates can get some shots up, and I knew that we we could win games off of that. Uh, yeah, from this most recent Manhattan game um, here at, at WVF, we kind of do like our own broadcasting you know, our YouTube channel, and so mm-hmm. I remember calling that game um, on Manhattan Trior. Uh, long arms uh, yeah. just he he was you know guarding people um, pretty hard I remember you just had kind of one shot driving to the basket and I th- think literally went up for it and we're just able to create enough space for yourself uh, to be able to get it up um, is that something you know you felt you talking about you know coming back from injury building back that confidence mm-hmm. is this something you felt like you could have done years past like is this you know for you has this been you're just kind of waiting to show people you've been able to do this. Uh, you mentioned the improvement as well. Um, just how does it feel to kind of be able to be handed the ball and make those shots on the court and be trusted to do that? Yeah, uh, I definitely expected this earlier uh, my freshman year, but, you know, stuff happens with injuries like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't really think about it or dwell on it too, pretty much. But, um, yeah, I, honestly, I've just been trusting my body a lot more. Uh, I got a lot more stronger than I was freshman year. I don't know if I could, you know, be backing people down like I was uh, like I am now, mm. so um, yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, the system changed, obviously. So um, I don't I don't really think about you know the past to be honest. You know, going off of um, the bigs, like you know, a lot of these teams in the MAC they are much bigger than you guys. You know, yeah. um, not, like the rebounding numbers on some of the teams is absurd. There's a guy in Canisius who's averaging eleven and a half rebounds a game. <laughs> Mitchell, uh, yeah, Frank <laughs> Mitchell. And it's just like a monster. I remember you guys. Um, obviously, you had bleach. Um, you had bleach more and all of those in that game. But like, you know, a lot of the times, like as an observation, you are out not outmanned in a sense, but like you're less. So mm-hmm. you know the rebounding numbers. You know they they're not eye popping, but you seem to like hold your own on that. How does Chris Casey you know emphasize you know like that like those fifty fifty balls like you know those possessions because it feels like. When you have those plays, it not only gets you guys back in the game and swings the momentum, but, you know, the crowd also. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I mean, he, he talks about it all the time, 50-50 balls. And like you said, we're often undersized. So it's not that, obviously, we, we, some games we're going to get out-rebounded. It's about effort, pretty much, he talks about all the time. And like you said, once we get those, we get in transition, and that's where we thrive, pretty much. We'll say 11 rebounds is absurd. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that is, uh, that's crazy. Um, 
you know, you talked about, again, that, that positivity. Um, and so for, you know, I was going to ask kind of who on the court maybe is the person that is, is bringing that back. I remember in, in the Manhattan game in that first half, um, you know, uh, it was to a point where it was like you guys would have a big play swing momentum and they would just come right back down and mm-hmm. do something to take away momentum and luckily you got it got that tip in in the half got the crowd you yeah. know able to get back in it and then yeah. you know we're able to run back uh into the locker room and everything so um is, is there someone on the team maybe maybe it can be you as well but anyone on that team that looks to you know let people lock back in especially if there's frustrations or if you know people are starting to get a little down honestly i feel like it's everybody to be honest but mm-hmm. Uh, if I had to pick a couple guys, I'd probably say Jasper and Caleb, mm. uh, Louis Bleachmore, obviously. They're really, really vocal guys on the team. You know, yeah. when we're down, they're always talking on the bench, you know. Even if they're not in the game, they're talking on the bench. So uh, we kind of lean on them to, to pick us back up when we're, you know, playing down. Yeah. And you mentioned, um, like, that staying that, that positive mindset, you know. Um, and a lot of the time you've had, like, not – you know, your starting lineups changed drastically. I think, like, then I think since the first day, you know, it's been a cooperation of, you know, you've been consistently starting. Caleb Fields has also Jasper Floyd, mm-hmm. um, but then like you know, um, you know, Goodein yeah, might get a start, and then um, Payne Smith, and then you know, um, James Johns Jr. You know, how has um, like setting the tone? Obviously, um, you know, I'm looking at like the stats now. You are, I think, a sec and like the stats show you're a better second half scoring team than you are a first half team but it seems like you've gotten better as of late um mm-hmm. saying the tone does coach casey emphasize the importance of that yeah definitely uh we're like you said we're kind of a slow starting first half team and that obviously needs to change a lot but uh i feel like that's just gonna that's gonna improve lately um we talked about it a lot in practice and we have a lot of guys that can pick it up quickly like can can heat up quickly mm-hmm. uh especially in the second half like you talked about and we have guys like you talked about James Johns who gives us a lot of energy in the first half and that mm-hmm. kind of helps us you know pick up yeah no, I think I'm, even though it was a loss I think he had a three in that um game against Iona to mm-hmm. end the half and I remember watching on ESPN plus in my room it was like you know b- big difference from being down nine from being down six but you know you're able to stay in that game and fight off a perennial um, Mac contender, obviously, with the success that they've had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you you know talk about the, the energy from players on the court, but also players off the court. I think the bench, too, seemingly yeah. this year, yeah. has been a lot more active. Yeah. Um, and this is both you know men's and women's team, both mm-hmm. the benches having a lot of fun. Um, how does that help you, you know, on the court and when you're kind of on the bench? Um, what is it about this year and this team that really you know makes you want to kind of celebrate everyone's successes? Yeah, we feed off each other a lot. Like, our bench is amazing. Like, like Maroof, Ryan, Matt, Luke, you know, even the managers who aren't playing obviously give us a lot of energy on the bench. And we obviously thrive on that. They're just like, I keep talking about positivity and stuff like that. Um, that's just co- cover, um, carry over from practice. Mm. And even when we're not in the game, like we're hyped for each other. It doesn't really matter who's who's winning, who's scoring a lot. It's just about, you know, getting the, the win. Yeah, no, um, you got obviously see, like, you know, going off of 1 and 6, I believe you've won. I think you are um, 12 and 3 in your last uh, 15, all the wow. way up to um, second and max. So, quite wow. a turnaround um, there. And, you know, it feels like the, brought like excitement back to this campus. You know, the Red Sea is yeah. packed every game. I remember yeah. it was a Sunday, afterno- a Sunday afternoon, that game against Quinnipiac. I'm like, oh, this is. Yeah. How is that, um, you know, feeding off of you guys? How is how are you responding to that support? Yeah, it's amazing every time. Not just the fans, like the community gives us a lot of support as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you, there's so many kids at the game, you know, with families and stuff like that. They look up to us like it's it's insane. Like, especially from last year, like a lot of our games were, you know, close to being sold out. And then now I think we had like three straight sellouts or something like mm-hmm. that. So it's it's insane for sure. I think uh, being on Sports Center for um, <laughs> top three definitely helps. So I'm just bit. gonna go into that a little bit. Um, how did you find out um, the, about the being on sport, the top 10 at number three? Well, my dad called me cause he, you know, he's always tuned into Sports Center. He mm-hmm. called me at like eight in the morning and just like, yo Jalen, like, like look at Sports Center, just look it up. And I couldn't find it. So I was like, send me the video, and he sent it to me, and, you know, he was super excited. You know, my teammates sent it to me. Like, I didn't expect it, honestly, at all. So mm. it was really cool to see, for sure. Yeah, I remember um, I actually was working with Stag Sports Network for that one, so mm-hmm. we were helping kind of, you know, man the broadcast from there, and you have the headsets on and everyone's talking. And when it happens, like, I just remember hearing, like, oh, like, into the headsets. <laughs> and then one guy's like, 
all right, he's like, everyone, let's get this right. This is going to be ESPN. He called it at the time. And um, yeah, seeing it the next, you know, that next morning too was, it was, it was pretty cool. No, but going back to it, it feels like you're feeding off of those big plays. I remember, you know, Goodein had that, um, I think there was one point in the season in the game against Iona where Goodein had an emphatic dunk. dunk yeah. But then you also, mm. I, on the other end, gave up, um, I think it was a three pointer. That same play? Iona. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, but, you know, we, one of the things we comment on, you know, is that defense to offense. You know, um, you know, especially looking on that game against Quinnipiac, you know, there were, um, I think, you know, in that thrill of a game, there were some opportunities there that, of course, um, Chris Casey probably um, emphasized. But how is he, um, how is his, like, hands-on culture, I guess, and, like, really um, – at the punch, but you know we see him on the sidelines, of course, going up and down after every play, <laughs> every missed call. He's yapping, um, rightfully so. But how is, are you, are you guys like feeding off of that? Other, this is like that buy-in culture. I think that Nellie Brown also talked about for the women. Um, yeah. You see it similarly with the men. Yeah, mm. definitely. I mean, he's super intense guy. Like it doesn't matter if it's practice or not. Like he's jumping up and down in practice. Like it doesn't matter. Um, he's just. He's just insane, honestly. Like he's just a crazy coach, but he's he we love him. Like he's he cares for us, obviously, and we obviously feed into that. Like when he's yelling on the side on our defense, like it gives a gives us an energy boost, honestly, and um, yeah, it definitely helps us for sure. Yeah. So Jalen, looking ahead now to Ryder here, um, what are kind of the next couple of days looking like for you? Yeah, uh, we had a scout today, uh, practice day, kind of looking at their sets and stuff like that, looking at the film of uh, the last time we played them. And like I said earlier, we really don't talk about, like, the positive stuff we do. We obviously have a lot to improve. The, they have a really good player, Mervyn James, who's, you know, first team All-Mac probably. I think he was actually going off of that, the um, voted preseason player of the year. Yeah, you know, Ryder yeah. were obviously voted um, Mac favorites. Yeah. I think one in the conference. So mm-hmm. um, is that kind of – I know this is your question, but going off that, does that kind of give you a chip on your shoulder? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely for sure. Um, I love playing against, you know, guys who – or picked top, top in the league. Uh, I think Alan Powell was picked for preseason first team all, mm-hmm. all, all mm-hmm. Mac or something like that. So, yeah, like a lot of our guards, like we we thrive on that playing against you know good players like that. The men have Ryder on Thursday and then St. Peter's on yeah, Saturday. Um, so Saturday. actually, uh, no, another tough matchup. Iona Niagara is going to be happening also this week, so that's going to mm-hmm. be interesting to see, especially as standings kind of you know start mm-hmm. to break down you know i think top five i, I know we don't like to think ahead in the standings yeah. like you know it was like a statistics minor like the probabilities and all that i'm just kind of <laughs> fascinated with the numbers yeah. like i think top five seeds um get a bias you know the, the each game counts and every game does in the mac for sure yeah. all right well jalen um, thank you so much for coming on today um for a third episode here of stags in the studio um if you all would like to hear more subscribe to youtube probably already listening through there Uh, Also, follow us on WVOF Sportscast on Twitter. Um, We'll keep you updated with Stags in the Studio as well as uh, broadcast times. I know uh, 11 a.m. for the women's team and 7 p.m. for the men's team. There you go. Um, So pack the Red Sea. You know, it's a it's a Thursday, but you know, it's a basketball night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Good luck with those games ahead, and thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me.